Rise and Grind Gears, my name is Tetsuyumi, and welcome back to some more Disgaea RPG, Should You Summon. And today, we are going to be looking at part two of the Witch and the Hundred Knight collab, taking a look at Miseria, Witch Girl Laharl, and Overlord Metalia. And before we start, I have two things really quickly to say. First is that, sorry if there's a little bit more background noise in my mic than usual. It's um very cold in my room at the moment, so I have my heater running. So if you can hear that, sorry, but hopefully you shouldn't be able to over the background music. But, you know, just in case, sorry. And the second thing I want to say is for Nizaria and for Witch Laharl here, uh, we are actually going to be taking a look at their stats on the Wayback Machine. The reason being is because, as far as I know, uh, the stats on the Wayback Machine will be accurate to what they are on global because instead I would be looking at the stats on the JP wiki because the global wiki sucks and the characters are just never added uh, so hopefully by looking at the wayback machine here these stats and all these skills should be accurate to how they are on global at release uh, if they're not I'm sorry please let me know in the comments or there'll be a, like a disclaimer in the description or maybe in the pinned comments something like that that is all apart from uh, overlord Metalia here because overlord Metalia is an anomaly. Basically, her stats on the Wayback Machine are the same exact stats as they are on the JP Wiki here, so I figured why not just take a look at her on the Wiki because it's going to be a little bit nicer to view. So, with all that being said, we can go ahead and start off with Nazaria here. So, first things first, Nazaria is going to be a monster metal queen ally. Her stats, if you scroll down here a little bit, are looking pretty good. So, as you can see, she has 134 for HP, which is decently high, and it will get higher when she gets buffed later on. Uh, but her main two stats are going to be her intelligence here and her resistance. So, basically, what this is telling you is that Nazaria is most likely going to be an intelligence-based attacker, just given how her intelligence stat is very high and also her defense stat is pretty high too i should mention that moving on down to her attribute she has 50 percent across the board 25 percent resistance towards poison 50 percent towards paralysis 75 percent towards sleep and 50 percent towards forget moving on to her abilities here we have her leader skill which is going to be veil of the mist all allies get intelligence resistance and hp up by 14 percent very nice at any plus one we get purple fro fog i almost said frog purple fog blessing all the all with the highest intelligence at the end of this unit's turn will get crit rate damage plus 35% for one turn. So basically, after this unit goes, the unit behind her with the highest intelligence is going to get plus 35% for their crit rate for one turn, which is great. At any plus five, we have Platinum Mystia. I think I said that right, I don't know. But basically, if three or more allies are surviving at the end of this unit's turn, you will get plus 100 on the action gauge, which is great, love to see that. And then at any plus seven, we get great fog, which again, I almost said frog. I don't know why I just really want to say frog, but this is all allies. If two or more magic monster forte allies are in your party, special skill damage dealt will be plus 20%, which is great. So if you were building a team, maybe around magic units or maybe around monster units, then if you get her any plus seven ability, you're going to be doing 20% more skill damage. Moving on down to her skills at level one, we get wall of ream rhyme ream I, I don't know but basically this is an aoe attack and also a party buff boosting the party's intelligence and resistance by 25 percent and crit rate damage by 20 percent for two turns on one ally and also inflicting sleep on all foes wow that is really strong that's surprisingly strong okay love to see that especially for a level one ability damn at level 200, we get Bewitching Mist, which is going to be an AoE attack, and also it looks like an AoE debuff, lowering the enemy's attack and intelligence by 40 to 45%, and speed by 20%, and again inflicting sleep. Okay, but uh, repeat use prohibited, which is fine. It does look like the SP on these first two skills are a little bit high, so you're not going to be, you know, blasting these off for the first turn in your first phase of battle or whatever. But honestly, looking at all the stat buffs and debuffs they do, I mean, inflicting sleep on all foes and also like massively lowering the attack and intelligence of the enemy, that's really, really good. Like so far, these two abilities alone are absolutely insane. And then at any plus three, we get Frozen Thunder Retribution, which is going to be a single target attack and a single target buff, removing the target's buffs. Oh, sorry, single target debuff i guess removing the target's buffs inflicting sleep and paralysis and also lowering their attack and resistance by 50 percent for five turns insane she, okay I, I'm, I'm gonna say i'm a fan so far of nazaria she she just seems very very good like if you can actually build up 
maybe like a a, a magic monster uh, team around her, get that extra 20% skill damage, she's going to be providing a lot of great buffs just to keep your team attacking, really, like inflicting all of this sleep, inflicting paralysis, stuff like that. What it sounds like to me is she's just going to completely stop the enemy party so you guys can get a few more attacks in with your party, maybe even with this unit, because she does have a very high intelligence stat. So she is going to be doing a significant amount of damage as well, on top of just giving all of these buffs and debuffs, which is really nice. And then finally, this is what her magic skills are looking like. Looks like you get a magic boost, which is going to be boosting your intelligence. You get a speed boost, boosting your speed. You get an attack lower on the enemy. So all that good stuff. And again, just more stuff to, to help out. But I'll say, I'm a fan of Nazaria. I, I am absolutely a fan of her. Uh, as to whether you should summon on her or not, here's what I'm going to say. I think she is great. I think, you know, if I had the gems right now, I would probably summon on her. The only reason I'm not going to is because I don't really have a team that would necessarily fit her in that she can be utilized the most in. But I'm if you have a maybe all monster team, maybe you have like an all magic, maybe like a all metal uh, forte team, something like that, she would fit incredibly well even as just like a regular intelligence based attacker like if instead you didn't summon for uh metalia you know you want to summon for nazaria i would say go for it because i really really like nazaria as a unit now of course this unit on paper compared to this unit in game is two sort of different things so maybe if you did summon for the unit maybe if you have her if you just know her from jp let me know in the comments what you actually think of her but yeah i'm gonna say i definitely like this unit Moving on, we have Witch Girl Laharl. So Witch Girl Laharl is going to be, if I scroll down here, apparently nothing. She has no type, uh, but she does have a gender. Good for her. <laughs> um, let's see, can I be click on these? Okay, yeah, they're, 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 they're finally loading now. So she's going to be a monster physical pawn ally. Moving down to her stats, we have her at 131 in HP, which is pretty high. 53 in attack, which is... You already know just from that stat right there, she is going to be a attack damage dealing character. Also very high defense sitting at 48, uh, you know, basic intelligence, pretty basic resistance, and also basic speed at 54%. Her attributes are going to be 50% towards fire and 25% towards everything else. For her resistances, we have 75% towards poison, 50% towards paralysis and forget, and 25% towards sleep. Going down to her abilities, we have her leader skill, claim the swamp witch's power. All allies will get attack, defense, and HP buffed by 16%, love that. At any plus one, we get ultimate witch technique. At the end of the turn, if this unit has 20 plus SP, okay, 20 or more SP, consume 20 SP and gain action gauge of 1000, max two times in a row. So basically, the action gauge of 1000 is just going to mean you immediately go again. So if you have over 20 or 20 SP, you'll consume that automatically and then just go again for max two times in a row. I can kind of see this as a really super useful thing and also something that might absolutely suck. Because here's the thing, if you were doing a raid or something like that where you really wanna spend your SP wisely, this might absolutely just kinda cuck you because you're gonna be wasting that 20 SP even if you don't want to. Like maybe you wanna do this, for instance, her any three ability here, which I can see is pretty high costly on the SP. If you're trying to save up for that early on in the battle, then having something like this might kind of really suck. However, if you're doing something like a story event or really just any event that has multiple waves, I can see this actually being really useful because it'll mean you'll be able to clear out those earlier waves a lot faster and then get to the boss where you you know, can maybe stack your buffs, stuff like that, just save your SP on your other characters. So this skill is going to be another one where I take to you guys to ask if this is a good skill, if you guys find this very useful, or maybe if you just absolutely hate this skill. Maybe, you know, again, if you know it from JP, if you have this character, please let me know in the comments, because I could see this as a great thing or a detriment to your team, in all honesty. And at any plus five, we have a witchcraft boost, which is going to be when she is equipped with a physical monster weapon, damage dealt will be plus 60%, which is insane, because let's be real, you are always going to have her be equipped with a physical monster weapon. I mean, that's her forte. Then at any plus seven, we get wicked witch's pawn, which is self buff. When two plus pawn units are in the party, attack and defense are going to be plus 50%. 
which is great. Now, the only thing that would make this skill just unbelievably god tier is if this was like an all ally buff, but boosting herself in attack and defense by 50% is going to be incredibly helpful, especially, you know, looking back here, we can see that her attack stat was already pretty high to begin with. Her attack stat is just going to be through the roof. Like, if you do manage to go again with this action gauge and stuff like that, you're just going to be doing hit after hit. It's going to be insane. You're going to be doing a lot of damage with that. And moving down to her skills, at level 1 we get Blazing Swamp, which is going to be an AoE attack and an AoE debuff, lowering the enemy's defense by 10% and speed by 5%. At level 200 we get Colossal Meteor Home Run, which is going to be another AoE attack and also a self buff, so also it's going to lower the enemy's speed by 20%, which again, wow, lowering the speed by 20% is very, very good. Uh, and also going to be boosting her attack by 25-35% to 35%, and crit rate by 30%. Moving on to her any plus 3 ability, we get Astral Knuckle Nova, which is going to be a single target attack and also a single target buff on herself, which is going to be skill power increases after each use. So, because there's no numbers or anything attached to this, I can only ponder what this is going to be, but having skill power increase after each use, that's, that's pretty good, especially for a max of 3 times, it makes me think that this is possibly on the higher end of skill power increases. I've been thinking about this a little bit more, and I think that possibly this skill might have been balanced around this any plus one ability, right? Because realistically, this is a pretty high SP cost skill, and of course it has a max of three times. So maybe they were trying to sort of balance this character retroactively by having her kind of waste this 20 SP in the beginning part of the matches so you wouldn't be able to start stacking this skill power increase. So again, I don't know how much this skill power increase actually is, but having just a regular skill power increase is very good. And of course, this is an S to S plus power skill, so it's going to hit very hard on top of just being based off her attack stat, which is already pretty high. So this attack is going to have significant damage. So yeah, I really do think that this skill was sort of balanced around this NE2 ability, but I guess we'll just have to see how this plays out in game. Uh, a little bit weird, kind of almost a gimmicky character if you really look at it, because she's going to be wasting SP in the beginning and then going two times in a row. But at the same time, you're really going to be wanting to save SP with her so you can use her any plus three skill and get that uh, power increase. And finally, here are her magic spells. So we got Fire, Braveheart, Mega Fire, Mega Braveheart. So basically, you're just going to be doing attacks based on the fire element and also possibly boosting yourself or another ally's attack by 20 to 35% or even 40 to 55% if you want to go for the Mega Braveheart down here. Before we finish talking about this character here, there is just one thing I want to really quickly mention that I kind of forgot to up until now, uh, but that is just going to be the attributes of most of her skills and magic spells here. As you can see, a lot of it is based off the fire attribute, which also, you know, coincides with her fire attribute up here being higher than all of the other ones. So this character is very much so going to be an attack style character but based off the fire attribute. So again, this character could be very good for raids. Very similar to another girl, Laharl, that I can't remember the name of, that we got about a month or so ago that was based off of the water element. Uh, so very similar, you know, again, another attack style girl, Laharl character, except this time based off the fire attribute instead of that water one that we got. And as to whether or not you should summon on this character, whether or not I would recommend you summoning on this character, I... I honestly can't say I would recommend recommend it. Uh, I think she's good. I think she has her strengths. I think she has her weaknesses. One thing about her that I'm really just kind of iffy on is going to be that any plus one ability. Like this, if the unit has 20 plus SP, consume it and then go again. Like that really just doesn't sit right with me, especially when she has her any plus three skill doing what it does with like a max cap of three times. I feel like those two are kind of just there to sort of balance the character out like if maybe they were a different ability or if it was a different level three or any plus three skill then this character would either be like super powerful or maybe just really bad so i don't know i can't say for certain whether this is actually a good combination of ability and skill maybe again if you guys know let me know in the comments but for that reason i can't say i definitively recommend you summoning on her but it's really the same as every other character i've kind of showcased in this collab if you need a physical or a physical is she physical i think she is right yeah 
if you need a physical monster attack character that also just so happens to be the fire element maybe good for raids then yeah go for it summon on her i don't think in this case i don't think that the cons outweigh the potential pros i think she still is a very powerful unit especially just with a high attack stat and doing some pretty good stuff but i just can't personally recommend it just because i haven't really seen her in action i don't know how these act with each other and uh you know there might be better alternatives out there for you and last but not least, we have Overlord Metallia. And I was looking at this character a little bit before, you know, I started this recording here. And, oh boy, this character, this character is doing some stuff. Now, again, I do want to heavily preface this by saying that this, all these character stats, everything I'm going to list off for this character specifically, is on the JP side. These are all her JP stats after she's been buffed, etc, etc. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. But with that being said eventually all these buffs should be coming onto global regardless so eventually she will actually look like this have these stats and all that stuff but as her actual initial release on global will be she won't be nearly this powerful basically so with that being said overlord metallia is going to be a humanoid fist knight ally her stats are looking again incredible but this was because these stats are the jp buffed stats but basically, her HP is going to be pretty high, 163 for the JP side of things. Her attack is going up to 59%, which is already telling us that she is mainly going to be an attack damage dealing unit. Her defense is 45, intelligence 43, resistance 55, and then speed 56, which is a little bit higher than it normally is for DPS characters, I'm pretty sure. Looking at her attributes, we have 75% across the board, which is phenomenal. Looking at her resistances, we got 50% towards poison, 50% towards paralysis, 25% towards sleep, and then 75% towards forget. Moving on to her abilities, we get her leader skill, which is claim the overlord's power. Now this is going to be, from the looks of it, just a self buff, but it is boosting attack, defense, and HP by a significant amount. Now, not super a fan of only the self buff for the leader skill, but in all fairness, you are boosting not only her attack and defense, but also HP, which is sort of uncommon with the leader skill. So I'll, I'll, you know, I'll throw you a bone this time, Overlord Metallia. At any plus one, we have Overlord's Metal Fist. When equipped with a fist, element damage dealt will be plus 70%. Now this is big. This is very big. Remember this, guys, because this is, this is insane, especially, you know, giving you a sneak peek of what's happening down here. It gets crazy. At any plus 5, we get Overlord of Nibblehenne. At the start of combat, plus 40% of the party's basic parameters except HP for 3 turns. So basically, every party member is going to be getting plus 40% in all their parameters except for HP for 3 turns, which again, very good. Love the 40%. That's huge. And finally, at any plus 7, we get Netherworld, Netherworld, I said that weird, Code of Madness. At the start of turn, if any enemy is debuffed with defense, your attack defense and resistance will be increased by 40 percent for one turn and your crit rate damage will be plus 60 percent for one turn which is huge and this is the sort of ability where as long as you are constantly debuffing the enemy with defense this will pretty much just always apply and this can get really powerful too because if you have let's say a character like ryu bents on your party who came in the part one of this collab she has skills where if the enemy is debuffed she will basically do additional effects to them so if you have at least one really solid defense debuffer on your team not only are you pretty much always going to proc the additional attack defense and resistance by plus 40 percent for your whole team but you can chain that with characters like ryubens where you'll just be doing snowballing effects on them making them like forget their skills making them have paralysis stuff like that so this is a really, really good any plus seven ability. Love to see that. I wonder if it will be nearly as strong as this when she is first released on global. I guess we'll have to see. And then moving on to her skills, this is where her any plus one ability comes back in because as you can see with her skills and even with her magic spells here, she is going to be using every single element. So you can see her level one, she has the wind element level 200. She has the, the water element any plus three. She has the fire element. And then her magic spells down here, which... First off, they are going to be doing actual just attacks. They're also going to be based off the star element. So we have all four elements there, which makes this any plus one ability all the more powerful because you're boosting all element damage by 70%. So again, if you're doing a raid, something like that, where you know your enemies, 
uh, attribute, you can bring Metallia in instead of a, you know, maybe some sort of specialty unit like Witch Girl Ahara like we just discussed. And you can just use her, use maybe one, select one of her attacks and just steamroll them by doing 70% extra damage dealt. Absolutely insane. And speaking of insanity, looking at her level 1 skill, we get Swamp Storm, which is going to be an AoE attack and also an AoE debuff, lowering the enemy's attack and defense by 20% for 5 turns. A, uh, uh, kind of, kind of pairs up insanely well with her any plus 7 ability there, you see, you see that? And then also, enemy buffs are halved, and the Thorns effect is applied for 3 turns on all enemies. Now, I am not familiar with with what the thorns effect is that might be a mistranslation or it might be some sort of new effect or i could just straight up not know it at all um but the thorns effect to me it sounds like maybe if the enemy attacks you they will take partial damage either that or it could just be something like poison while they'll take like damage per turn something like that but either one of those things basically you're going to be applying this effect and it's probably going to help your team because it sounds to me like a debuff at her level 200 skill, we get Broom Impact, which is going to be a single target attack and also a massive, massive buff on herself and some allies. So basically, this is going to boost her action gauge by 1000, which means she immediately goes again after she does this, except no consecutive use, so you can only use this once every other turn. Boosting her attack by 50% for 3 turns, as well as lowering the enemy's defense by 20% for 3 turns, and inflicting the thorns effect for three turns on all the enemies and then again inflicting defense and resistance by 25 percent for three turns for all allies so you really get you just open pandora's box you're grabbing buffs you're grabbing debuffs you're grabbing anything she goes again she goes a second time when you apply this she gives herself an attack boost by 50 percent for three turns which again insane especially if you pair that up with maybe one of her other skills then you're lowering the enemy's defense which again pairs up great with her any plus seven ability after that you're giving your entire enemy team more thorns effect for three turns and on top of that after you do all of that metallia is not done she says i have a little extra here all of my allies you can get this defense and resistance buff by 25 percent this skill may just be one of the best skills that i've seen so far now again big big uh, big disclaimer this is of course the jp version of this skill i don't know if the global one is going to have quite all these effects or be quite as powerful but at the very least after she gets buffed on global it will look like this and it will be amazing so there you go and last but not least we get her any plus three skill which is going to be s u h m g a sumga so we get her Sugma skill. Basically, this is going to be a massive single target attack with the S2S plus power level based on the fire attribute and based off her attack stat. And this is going to be damage calculated by adding 15% of this technique's power to defense debuffed enemies plus er, and 10% of resistance buff on herself. So basically, the more resistance you have on yourself, the more defense debuffed your enemy is, you're going to be calculating that adding 15% of this technique's attack power, which is also going to be boosted even further by the element damage for the attack, which is going to be fire, base 70% here. And then you're going to be calculating all that up to deal damage on top of it just being straight up an S to S plus power level. So this attack is going to hit very, very hard. The way I can see this going is maybe if you're lucky enough to go three times in a row, maybe two times in a row, you afflict them first with your level 1 ability, you start getting their defense lowered, you know, all is well and good, then you have enough SP, you get her second ability, so you get to go immediately again, but you're also lowering their defense even more by 20%, and then finally after you do all that, then you can go and do her any 3 ability, which is just going to be doing insane amounts of damage because you've resistance buffed yourself, and you've defense debuffed the enemy by at this point 40%. So on top of that, you're going to be doing, you know, a little bit of extra damage just because you have this elemental damage increase by 70%. So this skill, I can imagine, is going to hit like a train. Like, th this is going to be an insane skill if you can build it up right. Really, I think the only drawback is going to be if you just have the SP to do it, which is where maybe if you get yourself an SP battery character in your team, that's going to be really helpful. But all in all, these skills paired with these abilities... Wow.
And then finally, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but we have all her magic spells, and all of these are going to be based off of the star attribute. So we have star, which is just going to be a single target attack. Then we go to mega star, which again is going to be an AoE attack, a little bit stronger. Then, you know, giga star, omega star, all that good stuff. And also we get armor break, which is going to be a defense lowering ability with a single target attack on the enemy. So again, even more chances for this any plus three ability to just rack up damage because you're going to be lowering the enemy's defense by so much. And also before I forget, here are her nether enhancements if you want to take a look at those. And also Kilia's training, you can see she gets a few, you know, a little bit of minus SP power up on some of her skills, stuff like that. Uh, and also, I guess while I'm at it, I can also show you guys that for Nizaria here, which is going to be, these are her nether enhancements, and these are her Kilia's training. And same thing with the Witch Girl Laharo, these are her nether enhancements, and these are her Kilia's training. So, with that out of the way, Overlord Metalia is phenomenal. Like, phenomenal. Now again, don't know if she's gonna be quite this strong on Global when she's released, almost definitely not. But even if she's like a little bit close to this, I think this character is a very, very strong contender on if you should summon on them or not. I probably even will go back in on this collab banner and summon on Overlord Metallia here because she is, she's just really good. You really just can't deny the insane amounts of abilities she has, the skills, they all just pair so well into each other she's gonna be a great all-around character you know not good for particularly one thing or the other you can see that she has all different attributes so she's gonna work right on raids she just does she just does a ton of stuff i think she's a really really good character now again let me know if she is as overpowered on global as she is on jp here almost definitely not but let me know what you guys think in the comments below and with all that being said that is going to be it for this video. So again, like, subscribe, comment, do all that good stuff. Let me know if you guys disagree with any opinions I have. Let me know if you have any additional information that would be helpful to anyone else who's thinking about summoning all that good stuff. And again, with all that being said, that's going to be it for me. Peace.